Sup guys. Welcome back to another video. This is the part 3 of what if Naruto had a poison bloodline. Before we start don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more awesome fanfic videos. Be sure to check the description and big thanks to Kairomaru. You can check out more of my fanfic readings in my channel's playlist. So let's start the part 3. The morning mists of Nami no Kuni had only recently cleared when Tazuna and the Konoha ninja exited the bridge builder's home. I'll make the security detail now. Naruto stated before going through a few hand seals and calling out. Doku Bunshin no Jutsu. Poison smoke emanated from Naruto's skin before forming into 20 clones, all 20 stood at attention awaiting orders. Surround the house and guard Tsunami-san and Inari-san from any of Gato's men. Naruto ordered before going through another set of hand seals. Kachiyose no Jutsu. He called before a puff of ninja smoke obscured everyone's view. When the smoke cleared, everyone saw the massive horde of average-sized rats the blonde had summoned. What are our orders, Naruto? Soeki asked while the other rats waited behind him. Security detail, Soeki. I need you and the others to hide yourselves all over the property and keep any of Gato's thugs from harming the two people inside. Naruto explained while Soeki listened. No problem Naruto, we'll keep them safe. Soeki replied. I know you will, but I want you guys to arm yourselves with these. Naruto said as he quickly unsealed a large group of Senbon. They've already been poisoned so anyone you stab with them will go down shortly afterwards. Naruto told him while Soeki picked up one of the Senbon and held it like a spear. You heard the boss, guys. Everyone grab a Senbon and get in position for guard duty. Soeki called out to the other rats. Within moments, every rat had a Senbon and were crawling away to various points around the house both inside and out. When Tsunami-san comes to the kitchen introduce yourself to her Soeki, let her know that you're with me, she shouldn't have a problem with you being there after that. Naruto told Soeki, who nodded before running back into the house through the still open door. Now that security is taken care of let's head to the bridge. Kakashi said while leading the rest of the ninja towards the bridge with Tazuna in the center of their formation. Once the group of Konoha ninja had arrived at the bridge, they all noticed the workers had been beaten severely and were left lying on the ground. Who did this to you all? Tazuna asked as he helped one of his workers sit up slightly. A, a mon, a monster. The worker struggled to get out before passing out. Suddenly a thick blinding mist began blanketing the area causing the ninja to go on guard. Well now, what's this Kakashi? Seems you called for reinforcements. A gruff voice called out from the mist before two figures became visible to the Konoha ninja. On the right stood Zabuza with his Zenbato slung across his shoulders. While on the left stood the false hunter Nin that had helped Zabuza escape last time. Zabuza looks a lot like his last bingo book picture, but I can't tell who the hunter Nin is. Anko said aloud while Naruto nodded in agreement. Enough with the pleasantries Zabuza. We both know neither of us is going to back down so we might as well start this battle. Kakashi stated while Zabuza laughed at the copy Nin's remark. True enough, Kakashi, the fact that you have more allies only means you're going to need more body bags. Zabuza exclaimed before blasting the Konoha Nin with his killing intent. Reminds me of Anko's killing intent. Naruto thought as he kept his eyes on both of their enemies. Not bad, this guy might just put up a fight. Anko stated with a grin as she pulled out two kanai and shifted into her taijutsu stance. Both Sasuke and Sakura were struggling to keep from shaking which Zabuza quickly noticed. It seems two of your brats can't stop shaking, Kakashi. Zabuza mocked as he created six Mizu Bunshin that quickly headed for the group of Konoha Nin. I'm shaking, with excitement. Sasuke stated before he launched himself at the Mizu Bunshin and quickly took out all six. Seems the brat has gotten a little faster, you may have found a rival in speed. Zabuza stated to the false hunter Nin. So it seems. I'll defeat him quickly, because I believe that there is a far more powerful opponent amongst the genin. The hunter Nin stated before dashing towards Sasuke at high speed. Well, since our brats are ripping each other's throats out, how about us adults do the same? Zabuza questioned before he jumped back into the mist and pumped more chakra into the Kiragakir no Jutsu. Sounds good to me. 
Anko stated before she and Kakashi became enshrouded in the mist. Haku vs Team 7 and Naruto Haku quickly closed the distance between Sasuke and herself and launched a kick at the Uchiha. Sasuke ducked the kick and retaliated with an uppercut. Haku sidestepped the uppercut and hit Sasuke in the ribs with a pun chapter Sasuke gasped as he felt his ribs compress slightly from the force of the strike before he tried to back away and gain some distance. Haku didn't let him get away before she pulled out three senbon and launched them at Sasuke. He looked up just in time to dodge the three needles and jump back from the false hunter nin. You're a little better than I thought. Haku stated as she readied her next attack. Just wait. I'll show you the true power of the Uchiha clan. Sasuke said with an arrogant smirk as he straightened up and grabbed a kanai with each hand, before rushing at Haku and making several swipes and stabs with both blades. Haku kept sidestepping and backing away from Sasuke's attacks before pulling out two senbon and blocking both of Sasuke's kanai. You're decent Uchiha-san, but you're not strong enough to truly challenge me. Haku stated before kicking Sasuke in the chest and launching both Senbon at the off-balance Uchiha. The two Senbon struck Sasuke in both sides of his chest causing him to cry out in pain before falling backwards. Before Sasuke could get back to his feet Haku completed a series of one-handed seals and stomped on the ground causing water on the ground to rise into the air. Sweeten Hajutsu. Sensatsu Suisho. She called out before all of the newly formed needles launched at Sasuke's prone form. Before the needles struck the Uchiha, a blast of high-pressured water knocked a majority of the needles away. Sorry, but I can't let you kill a Konoha Nin when I can stop you. Naruto told her as he stepped forward and got into his Taijutsu stance. You saved the Uchiha's life, but you didn't prevent my attack from hitting its target. Haku replied as she pointed towards Sasuke's body. Naruto looked towards Sasuke and saw that several of the needles had managed to pierce the Uchiha's body in various places. I see, then this will be a bit harder than I thought. Naruto responded before he put himself between Haku and Sasuke. Sai, Sakura, take Sasuke and Tazuna and move them away from the battlefield. Protect both of them until the battle is over. That's an order. Naruto called out before he launched several poisoned senbon at Haku who quickly dodged out of the senbon's path. You'll have to do much better than that. Haku stated before launching her own senbon at Naruto and going through more one-handed seals. High out in Hajutsu, Makio Hyosho. Haku called out as multiple sheets of ice formed from the ambient water in the air and surrounded Naruto in a dome of ice mirrors. Interesting jutsu. I'm assuming this is a bloodline, correct? Naruto surmised as he watched Haku merge with one of the mirrors. You're correct. My high out in jutsu is my keke Jenke. Unfortunately, in my homeland of Mizu no Kuni, bloodline limits are seen as the cause of war and strife and carriers are hunted down and killed on sight. When my father found out both my mother and myself were carriers he killed my mother and tried to kill me as well. To save my life I accidentally lashed out with my bloodline and killed my father. I spent the next few months living alone on the streets, until the day Zabuza Sama found me. He didn't care that I had this ability, in fact, he wanted to use it. He gave me a purpose and a reason to live and for that I'll gladly fight and die for his cause. Haku explained as her reflection suddenly appeared in all the mirrors simultaneously. I'm sorry to hear that Hunter-san. However, you are currently trying to kill myself, my sensei, my allies, and the only hope this country has of saving itself from Gato's tyranny. To protect my sensei, my allies, my mission, and my life I'll take your life without hesitation. Naruto said seriously, as he began to produce a thick poisonous smoke from his body. I see, you are also a carrier of a Keke Jenke. This battle has just become much harder. Haku stated before she attacked. Before Naruto could react, he was hit from every direction by Haku's senbon. Naruto tried to follow her movements but before he could even turn around, he was hit from all directions again. Alright, that really hurts. It seems this guy's bloodline lets him move from mirror to mirror at high speed. This is going to be a little bit more difficult. Naruto muttered to himself before going through a set of hand seals. In the instant Naruto finished his seals he was again struck from all directions. This is odd. 
This hunter nin isn't aiming for any of my vitals. Why would this guy hold back in a battle like this? Naruto questioned mentally. Regardless, I'm ending your technique now. Miasma no jutsu. Naruto exclaimed as he exhaled an incredibly dense cloud of black and purple poison that quickly filled the inside of the ice dome and started seeping out between the mirrors. No, with this toxic cloud between all my mirrors I can't move from one to the next without getting poisoned. I can't even leave the mirror I'm in, but the worst part is that boy has completely blocked my field of vision. I can't tell where he is at all. Haku spoke in shock as she tried to find Naruto's location through the toxic jutsu. Unknown to Haku Naruto had used the cover of his jutsu to leave Haku's mirrors and head towards the battle between the Janin. Now that the hunter nin is trapped I can help Anko and Kakashi. If I can even touch Zabuza once with one of my lethal poisons it'll make the battle a lot easier for Anko and Kakashi. Naruto thought as he stopped at the edge of the mist. But first I need to get these senban out of me. He spoke as he began removing the needles the hunter nin had hit him with. At Tazuna's home two of Gato's thugs had just emerged from the forest near Tazuna's home with an arrogant swagger. Both had swords at their waists and headed towards Tazuna's home. As soon as the first thug had set foot on the pier, five of the Doku Bunchen hidden around the house landed in front of the two thugs. Sorry, but there's no one allowed past this point. Said the lead Doku Bunchen as the five clones stared down the two thugs. Shut your mouth and move out of the way you little brat, unless you want to die. Said the tattooed thug as he unsheathed his sword and swung it at the lead Doku Bunchen. Before he could complete his swing all five Doku Bunchen had moved and subdued the thug with several body holds and joint locks. Before he could try to retaliate all five Doku Bunchen exploded in a thick toxic cloud of poison, which he inhaled and began hacking and coughing. While the tattooed thug was taken down the bandana wearing thug ran towards the front door of Tazuna's house. The bandana thug dodged three more Doku Bunchen that had jumped down from the roof in an attempt to take him down before he reached the front door and kicked it down. When he fully entered the room, he saw no one inside and drew his sword to prepare for any more surprise attacks. Suddenly he heard a scratching sound and looked to his left and right trying to find the source. What the hell is that sound? The bandana wearing thug yelled as he looked all over the room. He looked up when he heard the scratching get louder directly over his head. What, in the, hell? He muttered as he saw at least a hundred rats perched in the rafters of the room. Before he knew it, the rats began jumping down from the rafters and landing on him. Shit. Get off me. He yelled before he felt several stabs all over his shoulders and arms. More and more rats jumped from the rafters and stabbed the thug with their poison senban. By the time, the last rat had stabbed the thug and crawled away from him. The thug was dead on his feet and slowly fell backwards with roughly 100 senban sticking out of his shoulders, arms, and torso. Well, that takes care of that, said a doku bunchen as it came in from outside and dragged the body away and disposed of it along with the body of the tattooed thug. Back at the bridge Zabuza vs Kakashi and Anko the fight between the three Janin had been going on for several minutes already and neither side had a distinct advantage yet. Zabuza's Muon Satsujin, 1, allowed him to get close but Anko and Kakashi were constantly guarding each other's back making it difficult to get a strike in. While Kakashi and Anko weren't hit yet they also hadn't been able to land an attack of their own against Zabuza. Every time one of them would try an attack, Zabuza would s back into the mist and disappear from view. This is really getting annoying Kakashi. Anko remarked as the two waited for Zabuza's next strike. I agree, but there's little we can do about it at the moment. Even if I start using my Sharingan, I won't be able to see through this mist. I'll just be wasting chakra. Kakashi replied before both of the Janin jumped away from each other as Zabuza's Kabikari Hucho came down where the two were just standing. You both talk a lot considering you're in a life and death battle. Zabuza taunted before he disappeared into the mist again. We've got to find a way to end this Kakashi. I don't know the overall level of that false hunter Nin. He may be too strong for our students to handle. Anko whispered to Kakashi who nodded in agreement. If we could just pin him down for a few moments I might be able to take him out with my rakery. But we'd have to be sure he couldn't get away before I connected otherwise we'd be right back where we are now. 
Kakashi responded as he scanned the mist for any sign of Zabuza. It seems someone else has entered my Kirigakir no Jutsu. Zabuza stated suddenly before he chuckled slightly. It's more than likely one of your brats. Haku knows better than to enter my mist while I'm fighting. He finished before taking a swing at Anko and Kakashi. Both of the Janin ducked the horizontal slash aimed at their midsections before launching a kanai each at Zabuza's location. Zabuza simply blocked with the flat of his blade before disappearing back into the mist. Who do you think entered our battleground? Kakashi questioned as he and Anko got back to back again. Possibly Naruto, if he was able to take down the hunter Nin he'd come to try and help us next and leave your full team to protect Tazuna. Anko answered him while waiting for Naruto to get to their location. Anko sensei, Kakashi san, I'm here to assist you in battle. Naruto stated as he got back to back with the two Janin. What do you plan to do, Naruto? Kakashi questioned as he looked at the blonde Genin. Naruto looked back at him with a grin before responding. I'm going to force Zabuza to abandon this mist of his. Naruto answered with determination. But to do it I'll need you two outside of the mist to ambush Zabuza when he leaves its cover. He finished while both Janin looked at him as if he was crazy. Naruto. This isn't a class Janin we're talking about. You can't handle an opponent of Zabuza's caliber yet. Anko told him with a stern look. She's correct Naruto. Zabuza is a master of Muon Satsujin. You'll be killed before you even see him. Kakashi stated while looking around for Zabuza's next attack. I know I can't handle him alone. That's why I'm only flushing him out for you two to take down. Naruto replied before all three Konoha Nin had to jump away from Zabuza's sword aimed at their heads. You two get outside of the mist, I've got this. Naruto yelled towards Kakashi and Anko before dark green poisonous smoke exploded off his body and formed around his arms and legs. Both Janin could only nod and head for the edge of the mist before Zabuza could block their path again. You must be suicidal, kid. You're ten years too early to be challenging me to a fight. Zabuza remarked as he opened his eyes to look at Naruto's smoke-covered form. I'm all too aware of that, Zabuza-san. But I'm only here to take out your mist. Anko and Kakashi are the ones who are going to finish you off. Naruto replied before ing back his right fist. Dokukamori no Jutsu. Naruto yelled as he punched in Zabuza's direction sending the thick dark green smoke towards the missing Nin. Zabuza quickly dodged the incoming poisonous smoke only to have to dodge again as Naruto punched at him with his left hand and launched another column of smoke at him with a kick. Not bad, kid. But your jutsu is a bit too slow to hit me. Zabuza stated as he readied his sword to cut the genin down. That's true, but it's doing its job of filling your mist with my poison quite well. Naruto responded as he gestured to the half of the mist where his poisonous smoke was hanging in the water-saturated air. It seems like you're a smart little brat, aren't you kid? Zabuza questioned before Naruto went through several hand seals. Uedoku Sweden. Dokuso Tepudama no Jutsu. Naruto called out as he SWOW three spheres of liquid poison at Zabuza who went through his own hand seals. Sweden. Sujinheki no Jutsu. 2. Zabuza called out as part of his non-poisoned mist turned into a wall of water and blocked all three poison spheres. You'll have to do better than that, kid. He called out before rushing the blonde with his sword in an attempt to cleave the boy in half. Dokukamori no Jutsu. Naruto called again as he punched several times at Zabuza who quickly brought up another Sujinheki no Jutsu to block all the poisonous smoke coming at him. When the smoke cleared, Zabuza found Naruto rushing through a long series of hand seals for what appeared to be a high-level jutsu of some type. So you want to play with high-level jutsu, kid? I've got one for you. Zabuza yelled before he stuck his sword into the bridge and sped through hand seals of his own. Dokuryuden no jutsu. Naruto announced as a massive amount of purple sludge-like poison rose from his back and formed into a large dragon that quickly sped towards Zabuza. Not bad, brat. However, this is how you perform a Ryuden Jutsu. Sweden. Swiryuden no Jutsu. 3. Zabuza yelled as the water beneath the bridge rose up and formed a massive dragon that launched itself at Naruto's smaller poison dragon. When the two Jutsu met, 
the water dragon tore through Naruto's poison dragon and headed towards the blonde genin. Sweeten. Swiryuden no jutsu. Kakashi called out as his own water dragon rose up from under the bridge and slammed into Zabaza's weakened jutsu causing both dragons to disperse back into water. What? How could Kakashi see through, this, mist? Zabuza questioned before he looked around and noticed that his mist had dissipated from his lack of concentration. That brat actually made me lose focus on my jutsu. He muttered before he dodged Anko's Senijashu no jutsu, 4, and decapitated all four snakes in one swing of his sword. Suddenly everyone heard clapping coming from the unfinished portion of the bridge. When they all turned their attention towards the person clapping they found Gato himself, along with roughly 100 mercenaries, standing at the end of the bridge. I really expected more from you Zabuza. Gato mocked while staring at the four shinobi in front of him. You're being matched by a child and his teachers. How pathetic for the so-called Kirigakir no Kijin, 5, to be matched by such people. The fat little businessman laughed as he surveyed the scene with his army of mercenaries. When his eyes landed on Anko, he grinned perversely and began roaming her body with his eyes. I'll pay double to the man that brings me the exotic looking in the fishnet. She'd make a great personal sex toy for me. Gato proclaimed as he and his mercenaries laughed. Meanwhile Anko was quickly turning red with rage while Kakashi and Zabuza continued to stare each other down. So tell me Gato, why are you here? Questioned Zabuza as he looked away from Kakashi. Isn't it obvious you failure? I don't intend to pay you. It's much cheaper to hire mercenaries like these and let them finish you expensive ninja off after you've worn yourselves out. Gato explained as the mercenaries began to move forward towards the ninja. I see, well Kakashi, it appears I no longer have a reason to fight you in your group. I do need to have a chat with my former employer though. Zabuza said while readying his sword and dropping into his kenjutsu stance. My mission will be completed much sooner if I help you take out your former employer, so you'll have my support. Kakashi responded as he lifted his headband and revealed his Sharingan eye. What the fuck did that little bastard say about Enko sensei Naruto roared out as he came stomping up towards the front of the ninja group with murder in his eyes. I was really hoping not to do this today, but that little bastard deserves this. Naruto seethed as he held up his right hand and began gathering chakra into his palm. After a few seconds, a semi-visible sphere of chakra had formed in the boy's hand before quickly growing denser and brighter as Naruto added and compressed more chakra into the sphere. Eat this you asshole. Reshu Kokuha. Naruto yelled before tossing the sphere of chakra into the air and roundhouse kicking it towards Gato and his mercenaries. Kill them all, except the Gato yelled as he saw the sphere heading towards him and his army. The sphere of chakra smashed straight through the stomach of the mercenary directly in front of Gato and impacted Gato's head. Directly after impact the sphere exploded taking out Gato and the nine thugs surrounding him. The only thing left of the ten people was a large bloodstain on the bridge and a small crater from the force of the explosion. My hero. Anko said dramatically as she hugged Naruto's head into her ass. You're welcome, Anko, Sensei. Naruto panted out as he felt the drain on his chakra. It's still exhausting to use that technique after any other high-level jutsu. He muttered out as he fell asleep in Anko's arms. Don't worry Naruto Koi. I'll kill a few more for you. Anko whispered lovingly so only she and Naruto could hear. Anko quickly made a Suchi Bunshin and had it carry Naruto back to Tazuna and continue to protect him. All right. Which one of you maggots wants to die next? Anko questioned as she stepped forward, walking towards the thugs while cracking her knuckles. That little brat killed our paycheck. Let's kill these fuckers and take the women and everything of value from the town in compensation. One of the remaining mercenaries yelled out as the rest of the group cheered before charging forward planning to kill Zabuza and Kakashi, while taking Anko as a prize before ransacking the town. These guys aren't too bright, are they? Zabuza questioned as he charged towards the mercenaries. Apparently not. Kakashi responded while charging beside Zabuza. That just makes it more fun. Anko called before she threw several kanai towards the charging thugs taking out three of them with vital swows. Agreed. 
Zabuza stated before he quickly swung his sword and bisected four people. No way, he got four guys with one swing. He can't be human. One thug yelled before Zabuza punched him in the face so hard his skull fractured and killed him instantly. Rakery. Kakashi yelled as he charged straight through the crowd of mercenaries leaving several people with parts of their bodies missing and one guy who had Kakashi's arm through his chest. I got 20 with that one, you two need to hurry up so we can check on the genin. Kakashi called out as he threw the man he impaled off his arm. Alright, alright. Anko called out before she snapped a guy's neck and went through a few hand seals. Katen. Gukaku no jutsu. She called out before launching a large fireball towards the mercenaries and torched another 15. Got it. Zabuza replied before speeding through several hand seals. Sweden. Daibakufu no jutsu. 6. He announced as water from the ocean below rose up and began rotating at high speeds before speeding through 17 more thugs. Run away. They'll kill us all. One of the remaining mercenaries screamed as he and the others tried to make it to the boat they arrived in. Oh no, no, no. That just won't do. Anko called out as she started going through hand seals. Kachiyose no jutsu. She yelled as she placed her hand on the ground in front of herself. In a large puff of ninja smoke, a giant snake 50 feet long and 7 feet in diameter thick with dark gray scales appeared stretched out across the bridge. The snake looked towards Anko for orders while fingits out and tasting the air. You see that boat out there? Anko asked as she pointed to the boat slowly sailing away from the bridge. The snake gave a small nod and fed its again. There are about 30 people on that boat, you can eat every last one of them, Anko said with a grin. The snake gave its equivalent of a smile before slithering over the edge of the bridge, around the support column near it and down into the ocean water. What kind of snake was that, Anko? Kakashi asked as he watched the snake's shadow move quickly towards the fleeing mercenary's boat. Oh just a venomous sea snake, he'll enjoy a nice meal. Anko replied nonchalantly while watching the snake break the surface of the water beside the boat and consume three guys in one bite. That seems apparent. Zabuza stated as he watched the giant snake tear the boat apart looking for more people to eat. Well we should be attending to our genin now. Kakashi stated as he headed towards the other end of the bridge with Anko and Zabuza in tow. Once the three Janin reached the place where Naruto and Haku fought, they found a large cloud of toxic gas surrounding what looked like a single mirror made of ice. Anko, recognizing Naruto's jutsu, told the other two Janin that she'd take care of it and with three consecutive futon, Daitapa no jutsu. She'd pushed the miasma over the edge of the bridge where it fell to the ocean's surface and began to dissipate. Once the miasma was gone, the ice mirror shattered and a panting, exhausted Haku was on the ground trying to remain conscious. Zabuza quickly walked over, picked the girl up, and began carrying her towards the other genin and Tazuna, much to Haku's complaint that she could still walk on her own. Once the trio of Janin reached the genin and Tazuna, Haku had fallen asleep and Sakura had instantly started asking questions. Kakashi Sensei why are those two with you? Why did Enko Sensei's Suchi Bunshin carry Naruto back here unconscious? Is the mission complete now? What's going on? Sakura shouted out the rapid fire questions. In order? Gato betrayed Zabuza and his companion, so they have no reason to be hostile to us now. Naruto fought Zabuza and took out Gato with high-level techniques and jutsu that left him drained of chakra so he passed out. The mission isn't actually complete until Tazuna-san finishes building the bridge. As for what's going on, we're heading back to Tazuna's house to rest and recuperate. Kakashi answered as he told Sai and Sakura to help Sasuke walk back to the house while Anko carried Naruto and Tazuna followed them. Time skipped two days later. Naruto awoke in a warm futon and blinked the sleep from his eyes. After he sat up and stretched out, he looked around the room he was in and recognized it as his room in Tazuna's house. The door to the room quickly opened and Anko rushed in and smothered his face into her ass. I'm so glad you're awake Naruto, Anko said while hugging Naruto tighter. Thank you, Anko sensei Naruto replied after Anko let him go. How long have I been asleep? He questioned as Anko sat beside his futon. About two days now. 
You really used a lot of chakra on the bridge. Anko answered while Naruto's eyes widened slightly. The door to Naruto's room was opened again and this time Haku came in carrying a tray of food for the blonde. I'm glad to see you're finally up Naruto-san. Haku said as she set the tray across Naruto's lap. Please eat something, it'll help you get your strength back. She told him as she sat beside Anko. What are you doing here Haku? Naruto questioned the girl while taking a sip of the tea she'd brought with the food. Believe it or not, but Haku-chan here was actually the false hunter nin you fought Naruto. Anko answered for Haku while grinning widely at the girl who was now looking at the floor. Really? Well I did notice the hunter nin wasn't aiming at my vitals during our fight. That would explain why. Naruto mused while emptying his cup of tea and starting to eat the fish and rice Haku brought in. I'm sorry that I caused you so much trouble Naruto-san. Haku said while bowing low. Don't worry about it, you had your mission and I had mine, it's as simple as that. Besides it was a fun battle and you're really strong Haku-san. Naruto said while waving her concerns away. Haku smiled softly at Naruto's kindness while blushing lightly at how he eased her mind so easily. So what's been going on since I've been asleep? Naruto asked as he finished his meal. Well Zabuza and Haku are coming with us to Konoha. Me and Kakashi worked out a deal with the Hokage via messenger Hawk and he's agreed to hear them out. If he accepts them into our village, they'll both be required to serve probation and the Hokage will have to contact the Mizukage about the change in Zabuza's status. That'll be a political nightmare for a month or so but the old man has a way with words so it should work out. Other than that, Tazuna estimates the bridge should be finished in about a week and once it's finished we'll be heading back to Konoha. So you rest up and let Anko-sensei and Haku-chan pamper you until you feel better. Anko finished sultrily with half-lidded eyes while Haku blushed up a storm at Anko's suggestive tone. Yes, Anko-sensei. Naruto responded with a grin as he laid back, sighed while Anko moved the empty tray off his lap, and snuggled into his chest with a sigh. Haku was about to get up and walk out of the room when Anko's hand reached out and pulled her down onto the futon with them. I said Anko-sensei and Haku-chan, don't make me a fibber now Haku-chan. Anko told her as Haku blushed brightly while Naruto chuckled at Anko's antics. She's only kidding Haku-chan. She won't force you to do anything you don't want to. Naruto said as Anko let go of Haku's arm. Haku slowly stood up from the futon and bowed while keeping her blush. I'll take the tray down to the kitchen. I'll do what I can to make sure no one bothers you too. Naruto-san, Anko-san. Haku said as she picked up the tray and walked out of the room with her blush never leaving her face. Once the door was closed, Anko looked up from Naruto's chest and spoke. You know she'd totally sleep with you if you asked her, right? Anko asked with a grin as Naruto looked at her surprised. Why would I sleep with her when I'm with you? Naruto asked her perplexed. Oh I'm sure you'll be able to satisfy multiple women when we're done getting you trained up in the sexual arts. Anko purred out as Naruto blushed and stuttered slightly. Besides, I wouldn't mind playing around with a couple other women. It'd be very fun for me and it seems you like the idea yourself. Anko giggled while sneaking her hand under Naruto's blanket and grasping his rather stiff friend. Anko-sensei. Naruto gasped out as Anko slowly moved her hand up and down his arousal. What? Don't you like it, Naruto Koi? Anko whispered in his ear huskily before she let him go and pulled her hand out from under the blanket. Naruto was panting from Anko's teasing and couldn't talk without stuttering like an idiot. Don't worry Naruto Koi. You don't have to wait much longer. Your birthday is only a few weeks away and I plan on being the mother of your child that very night. Anko stated while lightly ing Naruto's earlobe. Anko looked at Naruto's face only to find out that her teasing had made Naruto pass out again. Oh Naruto Koi, you're so innocent. I can't wait to completely corrupt you. Anko giggled out as she went back to snuggling Naruto's chest lovingly. Naruto and Anko, along with Team 7, were standing in front of the people of Nami no Kuni at the beginning of the newly completed bridge. Zabuza and Haku were standing a bit farther back down the bridge to ease the civilians' fears. We can't thank you all enough for freeing us from Gato's tyranny. We don't know what we could ever do to pay you all back for this. 
Tazuna stated as the citizens of Nami no Kuni nodded in agreement. Tsunami and Inari stood beside Tazuna with smiles on their faces, while Inari also had tears of joy occasionally falling from his eyes. Don't worry about it Tazuna-san. We were just completing our mission and doing what was right. Naruto stated with a grin as Anko and Kakashi smiled at the explanation. We should be on our way. It'll take all day to get back to the village even if we run at top speed. Kakashi stated as he and Team 7 started heading down the bridge towards the end that connected to the mainland. You guys take care of yourselves now, alright? Anko told the citizens as she and Naruto turned to start walking away. We'll make sure of it. We won't ever let a monster like Gato take over our home again. The citizens called out as Anko and Naruto grinned before walking away with a wave. After the citizens couldn't see the shinobi anymore Inari turned towards Tazuna before speaking. Hey, Grandpa, what are you going to name the bridge? Inari asked Tazuna as Tsunami and the rest of the citizens looked towards the old bridge builder. I've been thinking about it for a few days now, and I've decided to name the bridge, the Great Naruto Bridge, in honor of the ninja that killed Gato and gave us our freedom back. Tazuna stated with a smile while Tsunami, Inari, and all the citizens called out their approval of the name. With the Konoha Nin the walk across the bridge was relatively uneventful. As soon as the group reached the end of the bridge they all jumped into the trees and started tree hopping in the direction of Konoha. Zabuza and Haku were jumping alongside the Konoha Nin as they raced through the forest towards Konohagakir no Sato. Throughout the journey Haku kept stealing glances at Naruto. Anko noticed and couldn't help but grin devilishly at Haku every time she caught the younger girl doing it. After several hours of travel the group was within sight of the gates of Konoha. When they got to the gate itself they were stopped by the Chunin gate guards. Halt. State your name and reason for coming to Konoha. Said the Chunin on the right. Hata, K. Kakashi, with Genin Team 7, returning from our mission to Nami no Kuni. Kakashi stated as he produced Team 7's mission scroll and handed it to the Chunin to examine, without looking up from his Icha Icha paradise. After looking over the scroll and confirming its authenticity the Chunin looked towards Anko. Mitarashi Anko, with apprentice Uzumaki Naruto, returning from our reinforcement mission. Anko said while handing the scroll over to the Chunin to inspect. After confirming the scroll is legitimate, the Chunin nodded and spoke again. All right, everything checks out. The Hokage is expecting you and your guests, Momochi Zabuza and Haku-san, for their appeal for citizenship. The Chunin stated before letting the group through the gates. As soon as the group made it through the gates Naruto was tackled to the ground amidst dual calls of, Naruto-kun. Once the dust had cleared everyone was able to see who had tackled Naruto to the ground. Hello, Naruto-kun. Did you miss me? Inazuka Hana asked with a grin as she held onto Naruto's left arm. You didn't tell us you were leaving, Naruto-kun, I'd have given you a special goodbye if you had. Inazuka Sume stated with a seductive grin as she held onto Naruto's right arm. If you two are done snuggling with my boyfriend, we need to report in to the Hokage. Anko stated with a pout on her face. Oh alright, do you want to meet up after your report? Hana asked as she and Sume stood up and pulled Naruto to his feet. We might be able to do that, what do you think Naruto-kun? Anko asked as Naruto stood between the two Inazuka women. As soon as Haku-san and Zabuza-san are taken care of and we've reported in, then I wouldn't mind spending time with my girlfriend and two other beautiful women. Naruto replied with a grin. Still the little charmer, aren't you Naruto-kun? Sume questioned with a grin while Anko nodded in agreement. He's such a gentleman too. Anko stated with a smile as she pulled Naruto into a hug. Anko, sorry to interrupt, but we all need to head to the tower to report to Hokage-sama. Kakashi stated while Sakura stood beside him with her eyes wide in shock. Sasuke just glared at Naruto. While Sai didn't react at all to the romantic display between Anko and Naruto. It only took a few minutes for the group to reach the tower. After checking in with the secretary the group of seven shinobi entered the Hokage's office. Ah, Team 7, Anko, Naruto. Serutobi acknowledged each of them with a nod. Kakashi, report. 
Seru Tobi ordered as he became completely serious. Yes sir. My team initially accepted a C-rank escort mission, protecting Tazuna the bridge builder, and we departed three weeks ago from the north gate. Kakashi started his report. Several minutes later Kakashi had recounted the group's mission to the aged Hokage. I see, so that's what happened. Very well, I'll hear your case. Momochi Zabuza, Haku-san. Seru Tobi stated as Haku and Zabuza stepped forward. Well, Hokage-sama, in my case I was never a kunoichi for Kirigakure no Sato. My mother took me from Kirigakure and hid our bloodline from everyone during the bloodline purges. After it was discovered that my mother and I had a bloodline my father killed my mother and I accidentally killed him with my bloodline. After that Zabuza-sama found me, took me in, and trained me in the shinobi arts. Haku recounted to the old leader before awaiting his judgment. That is indeed an unfortunate past you have, Haku-san. But as you were never a kunoichi for Kirigakure I can grant you citizenship and induction into our shinobi ranks after you serve a month-long probationary period. Seru Tobi explained causing Haku to nod and thank the old Hokage repeatedly. Now, Zabuza-san, I'll need to hear your story. The Sandame stated to which Zabuza nodded before recounting his own story. After a few minutes of speaking, Zabuza finished his history and Seru Tobi was in deep thought about the situation. Momochi Zabuza, as you have no outstanding crimes against Konohagakure no Sato, I will allow you to gain citizenship and induction into our shinobi ranks after you serve three months of probation and our interrogation experts confirm that you have no ulterior motives for coming to Konohagakure no Sato. Seru Tobi said as Zabuza nodded in acceptance. Now I'll grant you both an apartment EA chapter you'll be placed under conditions similar to house arrest until your probationary period is up. If you want to go anywhere you'll have to be escorted by a shinobi of your current rank or higher. In your case, Zabuza, you'll be escorted by a platoon of Anbu. Seru Tobi explained to the two former Mizu no Kuni residents. That's perfectly acceptable, thank you, Hokage-sama. Haku stated with a bow to the aged leader. I can deal with it, it's better than being hunted down by Hunter Nin. Zabuza replied with a nod. Very well, these Anbu will escort you to your places of residence. Seru Tobi said while snapping his fingers. Four Anbu quickly appeared in the room and the leader motioned for Zabuza and Haku to follow them. After the two former Mizu no Kuni residents had left with their escort, the Hokage dismissed the rest of the Konoha Nin after thanking them all for a job well done. With their dismissal team 7 went their separate ways out of the office while Anko and Naruto headed down to the front entrance. After the two had made it out of the tower, they both headed in the direction of the Inazuka compound to spend some time with Hana and Sume. I'll have to be on guard while we hang out with these two, you know that, Naruto-kun? Anko asked him with a grin. What do you mean by that? Naruto questioned, though the slight blush on his cheeks made it obvious he knew what she was talking about. Oh I'm sure you know, my little Naruto Koi. Anko stated with a sexy grin as she walked beside the flustered young Genin. I don't know what you're talking about, Anko Haim. Naruto stated as he looked away from her with a blush staining his cheeks. I'm just talking about the fact that both Sume and Hana Chan want you to fuck them. Anko stated casually as Naruto practically choked on air. Anko Chan. Don't just say that so casually. Naruto stuttered out as he quickly looked around the street to see if anyone heard his girlfriend say that. Only to find the street completely empty of people. But it's true. Sume and Hana Chan want you to fuck them, get them pregnant, and be the father of their child. Well, next child, in Sume's case. Anko commented with a grin as she watched Naruto cover his face to hide his blush and, she noticed, he started walking strangely. Oh, now what is this? Is Naru Koi getting turned on at the thought of getting Sume and Hana Chan pregnant? Anko teased while Naruto tried to hide even more of his face in his hands. No, I'm not. Came Naruto's muffled reply from behind his hands. What about the thought of getting me pregnant? Anko questioned with a smirk. Naruto's head quickly SWOW up to meet Anko's gaze with an intense blush on his face as he quickly pulled her into his arms and buried his face into her neck. Yes, that does it. 
Naruto admitted in a muffled voice as he nuzzled Anko's neck affectionately. Well I'm glad you like the thought so Mew chapter, Anko replied with a loving smile as she pulled Naruto closer to her body. Seems you're eager to get started too. She teased as she felt Naruto's arousal poking her lower stoma chapter, not my fault. Was Naruto's muffled reply. Well you might want to get your, little friend, under control, Naruto Koi. We're here and I'm sure Sume and Hana chan would love to put it to good use. Anko whispered into his ear seductively, furthering Naruto's current excitement. Naruto looked up at where they were and, sure enough, the couple stood before the entrance to the Inazuka compound. You said all that just to get me excited didn't you? Naruto accused as Anko looked at him innocently. Who, me? Why would I do that? Anko questioned with a sexy drawl as she ground herself against Naruto's arousal. Stop that. Do you want them to tie me to a bed and have their way with me for the rest of the night? Naruto questioned her with a suppressed. I see what's going on here. Anko said with a grin. Naruto Koi, tell me, what day do you think it is? She asked while increasing the strength of her grinding. Um, Friday. Naruto stuttered out as he shuddered in pleasure. Yes, but what about the number? Anko questioned as she began to sway her hips from side to side. Uh, I, oh, think it's, ah, uh, the ninth. Naruto finally got out amidst his groans of pleasure. That's right. Now, what month is it? Anko asked as she came to a complete halt. Ah, why'd you stop? Naruto questioned as he was enjoying Anko's grinding. Answer the question, Naruto Koi. Anko said with a grin. It's October, why is this all so important? Naruto replied while trying to get himself back under control. It's important because you're turning 13 at 12.01 tonight. You know what that means, right? Anko answered as she resumed her grinding against Naruto's arousal. That means I'm a legal adult by the village laws regarding Shinobi and Kunoichi. Naruto stated before a wide smile spread across his face. Are you catching on now, Narukoi? Anko questioned with sexy smirk as she slowly ground herself against Naruto's arousal. I believe so, Anko Haim. Naruto replied while pulling Anko closer to himself before kissing her gently. This is sweet and all. But if you're going to fuck each other at least come inside first. You two having sex in front of our compound wouldn't be the most romantic of first times. Sume stated with a smirk as she leaned against the, now open, front gate of the Inazuka compound. Anko and Naruto simply turned towards the Inazuka clan head before shrugging and entering the compound. After Sume closed and locked the gate she lead the two into her large home where they all met up with Hana sitting on the couch in the living room. Naruto-kun, how nice of you to join us. Hana stated with a husky tone as her eyes roamed up and down his body. Nice to see you again, too, Hana-chan. Naruto replied using the same suffix Anko used on her. Soon after, all four of them were talking and sharing stories of past missions with each other. After about two hours the clock in the living room began to chime loudly twelve times. My, my, my. How time flies. I hope you're ready Naruto-kun. Sume stated with a seductive grin as she stood up from her chair while Hana stood up from hers as well. So you two have everything set up like I asked? Anko questioned the two Inazuka women. Of course, Anko-chan, we want your first time with Naruto-kun to be everything you want it to be. Hana stated with a grin as she walked towards the stairs leading to the basement of the house. Thank you, Hana-chan, Sume, this really means a lot to me. Anko thanked the two as she pulled Naruto off the couch and lead him to the basement following after Hana and Sume. Why do I get the feeling that I've just been part of a plan that I knew nothing about? Naruto questioned as he followed after Anko. Don't worry about that, Naru Koi. Just focus on what you and I are about to do. Anko replied with a loving smile. Naruto simply smiled back while he walked down the steps. Inazuka Sume and Inazuka Hana present. Anko and Naruto's love den. Sume and Hana announced as they opened the door at the bottom of the basement stairs revealing a large king-sized bed covered in soft cotton sheets, candles along the walls giving off a faint glow, and a sweet-smelling incense burning in the four corners of the room. It's absolutely perfect. Thank you so much Sume, Hana-chan. Anko said while holding Naruto tighter. 
This is impressive. How long were you three planning this without me knowing? Naruto questioned as he took in the romantic atmosphere of the room. Just while you were gone and about two weeks before that. Hana answered with a grin at Naruto's stunned look. Well, we'll leave you two alone. Don't worry about the noise or anything. This room is soundproof so you can make all the noise you want. Sume called out as she and Hana walked back up the stairs before closing the door at the top of the basement steps. Lemon, you heard them, Naru Koi, tonight is just for us. Enko stated huskily as she closed and locked the door at the bottom of the basement stairs before looking at Naruto lovingly. I guess it is, Enko Haim. Naruto replied before the two met in a soft kiss as they made their way to the bed. As the two lovers sat on the bed, they broke their kiss and began to undress each other. Naruto slowly removed Anko's trench coat revealing her fishnet clad skin as he her neck lightly causing Anko to sigh happily at her lover's tenderness. Anko quickly pulled Naruto's burnt orange over shirt off of him before running her hands across his fishnet undershirt and feeling his developed muscles underneath. Naruto sighed at the feeling before he pulled Anko's fishnet shirt over her head and his way down from her neck to her newly exposed ass. Um, Naru Koi, that feels good. Anko ed out as Naruto continued kissing her large S before beginning to lightly F her S with his. Anko quickly wrapped her arms around Naruto's head to keep him from leaving her S while ing out her pleasure at his ministrations. Naruto moved his hands down Anko's waist, getting another shudder of pleasure from her, before resting his hands on her hips and working her miniskirt off of her body. Anko, not to be outdone, reached down and pulled Naruto's fishnet shirt off of him causing Naruto to leave her s and sit straight up again. Anko was quick to start trailing kisses all over Naruto's chest and abs while her hands went down to his pants and started working them off of her lover. Naruto groaned at the feeling of Anko's soft against his skin before he was pushed onto his back as Anko pulled his pants off of him. Anko threw Naruto's pants to the floor before staring at the large tent in her lover's boxers. You like, Anko Haim? Naruto questioned with a grin as Anko continued to stare. Oh yes, mommy likes. Anko responded before letting Naruto sit up and pull off her fishnet shorts leaving both of them in nothing but their final undergarments. Anko motioned for Naruto to remove her panties as she stood in front of him with a loving smile. Naruto quickly brought his hands to Anko's hips before pulling her panties down her long, sexy legs and revealing her most sacred area to Naruto's eyes for the first time. You're so beautiful, Anko Haim. Naruto breathed out as Anko stepped out of her panties. Thank you, Naru Koi. Now it's your turn. Anko stated huskily as she pulled Naruto to his feet before removing his boxers quickly and revealing his 7-inch erection to her eyes. Naruto smiled happily as Anko stared at his arousal with lust before she pushed him back onto the bed and crawled on top of him. Naruto, thinking quickly, FPED them over so that Anko's head was resting on the pillows at the head of the bed while he was holding himself above her. Your pleasure comes first, Anko Haim. Naruto stated in a husky voice before capturing Anko's in a passionate kiss. After the two lovers broke apart Naruto quickly his way down Anko's body. Placing a kiss on both of her s and running his over her belly button causing Anko to giggle. Naruto finally came to Anko's sex as she spread her legs apart to allow him access to her sacred area. Go ahead, Naru Koi. I wanted some Mew chapter, Anko breathed out huskily as he locked eyes with her before gently parting her soft folds and lightly in her sex. Anko's reaction was immediate as she gripped the blankets beneath her and arched her back upwards trying to get Naruto's deeper inside of her. Naruto fulfilled Anko's wish as he continued to her moistening sex while occasionally thrusting his inside to further her pleasure. It wasn't long before Anko's body arched up and she screamed out her release for the world to hear. Naruto was quickly lapping up Anko's release as she came down from her orgasm-induced high. You taste incredible, Anko Haim, we might have to make this a regular thing. Naruto breathed out huskily before Anko's legs quickly wrapped around his waist and FPED their positions. You're going to spoil me rotten, Naruto Koi, so I'm going to return the favor. Anko remarked as she passionately him and dominated his mouth with her. After breaking their kiss, which left a thin trail of between the two lovers, 
Anko moved down to Naruto's erection and quickly began to stroke it like she had back in the tent on their first C-rank mission. Naruto was groaning at the pleasure Anko's soft hands brought him. Anko Haim, that feels great. Naruto panted out as he began thrusting his hips in time to Anko's strokes. It's about to feel a lot better, Naru Koi. Anko replied with a seductive purr before she lightly ed Naruto's erection from base to the head. Naruto groaned loudly at the feeling Anko's wow had brought to his erection and the pleasure that it sent throughout his body. Anko Haim, more. It feels too good. Naruto panted out which caused Anko to smirk sexily before wrapping her around the head and slowly taking more and more of Naruto's erection into her warm mouth. Naruto's groans increasing in volume was all the indication Anko needed to know she was succeeding in pleasuring her lover. Anko began a steady pace of bobbing her head up and down while ing on Naruto. Causing him to place his hands on her head and run his fingers through her soft locks. A few minutes later and Naruto groaned loudly before Ming inside of Anko's mouth. After getting a taste of Naruto's seed, Anko quickly drank down the rest of his load before ing his erection clean. I'm glad you enjoyed that, Naru Koi. Anko said with a sexy grin as she crawled up his body before wrapping her arms around his neck and her legs around his waist. Now, let's move on to the finale. She said while FPING them over so that Naruto rested above her while her back was against the mattress. Naruto was quickly back to full length at Anko's forwardness and brought his erection to the of her sex. Are you ready, Anko Haim? Naruto questioned as he gently moved his erection across her sex. Yes, Naru Koi, I want you some Mew chapter please, give it to me. Anko answered with a loving smile which Naruto returned before pushing himself inside of her until he reached a barrier inside of Anko. Anko Haim, you're a virgin? Naruto asked curiously as he tried to keep himself under control from the immense pleasure being inside of Anko brought. Yes, Naru Koi. I wanted the man I fell in love with to be the one who took my virginity. And I fell in love with you. Anko responded lovingly as she gave him a nod to let him know that he could continue. Naruto her lovingly as he pushed past her hymen and buried himself to the hilt inside of her. Anko grit her teeth at the stab of pain that came from the loss of her virginity. Only to have Naruto wrap his arms around her and whisper loving words into her ear until the pain subsided. After the pain had passed. Anko rolled her hips to let Naruto know she was ready. The pleasure this action brought to both of them caused the two lovers to out each other's name in bliss. Naruto quickly built up a rhythm as he moved inside of Anko's warm, wet, sex causing him to her name when she started thrusting her hips in time to his thrusts inside of her. The two lovers stayed locked in their positions as they cried out their pleasure to the world. Naruto and Anko were lost in bliss pleasure echoing through them as they gave in to their most primitive and basic of instincts. All too soon for the young lovers their climaxes approached and with a final passionate yell of their lover's name the two collapsed in a mass of intense pleasure and sensation. Lemon end, that was amazing, Anko Haim, Naruto sighed lovingly as he pulled her closer to him. Hmm, it was incredible, Naru Koi. I love you, Naruto Koi. Anko sighed contentedly as she snuggled into Naruto's chest. I love you too, Anko Haim. Naruto replied as he held her in his arms. I can't wait to be the mother of your child Naru Koi. Anko said with a smile as they basked in their afterglow. You'll make a perfect mother, Anko Haim. Though it might take more than once. Naruto replied with a sleepy smile. Actually, I used the Hayokushikyu no Jutsu, fertile womb technique. So pregnancy is almost guaranteed, Naru Koi. Especially after how much of your seed you released inside of me. Anko stated with a grin as she held her hand against her stoma chapter. When did you use that jutsu? Naruto asked. He hadn't seen her use a jutsu all day. Yesterday morning, before we left Nami no Kuni. Just so I could make sure you'd give me our first child. Anko grinned at him lovingly. Tricky little minx, aren't you, Anko Haim? Naruto asked as he placed his hand on Anko's stomach too. Only for you, Naru Koi. Anko replied with a smile before the two lovers fell into a content sleep. The next morning Anko and Naruto woke up in each other's arms. Both smiled at the fact that they had finally made love and that Anko was more than likely pregnant. 
After a little morning groping the two lovers put their clothes back on and walked up the basement stairs hand in hand. I take it you two had a pleasurable night? Sume grinned at them as the two closed the top basement door. Very much so. Thank you for all your help Sume. Anko stated while lightly rubbing her stomach. A move that didn't go unnoticed by Sume. Already working on that clan of yours, right Naruto? Sume smirked while Naruto rubbed the back of his head with a grin. Yep, Anko Haim doesn't want to wait and I can't deny her something she wants this Mew chapter. Naruto replied while pulling Anko closer to himself. Well, feel free to stay for breakfast, Hana just finished making it so help yourselves. Besides, Anko Chan is eating for two now. Sume said with grin as she led the two lovers to her kitchen. After a breakfast of eggs, bacon, toast, and milk, Naruto and Anko departed from the Inazuka compound to take care of their shinobi duties for the day. Anko went to the pre-scheduled Janin Sensei meeting at the Hokage Tower while Naruto went to his apartment to tend to his poison garden. At the Janin Sensei meeting Anko sat next to Kuranai while awaiting the Sandame's arrival. While they waited the two Janin women made small conversation. Welcome back, Anko chan How was your mission? Kuranai asked her friend as she noticed Anko's happy expression. It went well. Just had to save Kakashi's brats from being killed, nothing big. Anko replied with a grin. So what have you and your team been up to Kuranai-chan? Anko asked with a smile. Just some extra training and a few C-rank missions. Nothing spectacular. Kuranai responded before asking her next question. So, why are you in such a good mood today? Kuranai questioned. Because me and Naruto Koi finally made love last night. It was romantic and I'm almost positive that I'm pregnant. What's not to be happy about? Anko whispered as she smiled happily. Seriously? You two are finally sleeping together? That's so adorable, Anko-chan. How was your Naruto Koi in bed? Was he rough and wild or soft and slow? Kuranai asked in a whisper as she stifled a giggle. He was just perfect. Slow and romantic with a good dose of passion and strength that made my toes curl and my back arch like a bow. He gave me the most powerful orgasm I've ever had. I don't know if I can wait the week it'll take before I can have a med nin check to see if I'm pregnant. Anko whispered back with a grin. Before Kuranai could respond Seru Tobi walked into the room and took his place behind the desk at the front of the room. This meeting of Janin Sensei has been called to nominate participants for the upcoming Chunin exams held in our village next Friday, October 17th. We will start with the Janin Sensei of the rookie teams. If any of you believe your team is ready for the exam step forward and nominate them now. Seru Tobi said as he looked upon all the assembled Janin. None of the rookies are ready for the exams yet. It's way too soon for them to worry about advancing in rank. Aruka thought from his place beside the Hokage. I, Mitarashi Anko, nominate my apprentice, Uzumaki Naruto, for the Chunin selection exam. Anko stated as she stood before the Hokage who nodded while writing down Naruto's name as an applicant. Is she insane? Naruto isn't ready to take that exam. Aruka thought while watching three more Janin rise from the group. I, Yuahi Kuranai, nominate Team 8 consisting of Hayuga Hanada, Aburame Shino, and Inazuka Kiba for the Chunin selection exam. Kuranai said to Seru Tobi who nodded and wrote down the three as applicants. I, Seru Tobi Asuma, nominate Team 10 consisting of Nara Shikamaru, Akamichi Choji, and Yamanaka Ino for the Chunin selection exam. Asuma said to Seru Tobi who nodded and marked down the three as applicants. I, Hata, K. Kakashi, Nominate Team 7 consisting of Uchiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and Sai for the Chunin selection exam. Kakashi said to Seru Tobi who nodded and put the three down as applicants. Kakashi quickly went back to reading his Icha Icha Paradise. Hokage-sama I must protest. Aruka exclaimed as he stood up from his seat. I had all of the rookies in my class so I know that they are not ready for these exams. They all need more experience before they try and move up the ranks. Aruka finished while Seru Tobi thought about what Aruka had said. He might have a point with your group Kakashi. Naruto and I did just have to save you on your last mission. 
Anko stated with a grin at Kakashi who merely looked at Anko from behind his book before replying. True enough, but I believe these exams will be educational for my team, so I'll allow them to participate and have the chance to advance like the rest of the teams. Kakashi explained while Anko just shook her head at Kakashi's nonchalant response. Actually, Anko-san, what about Naruto? If you put him in these exams now he'll be outnumbered in every part of the exams. Why not wait until Naruto can be placed on a team before taking the exams? Aruka questioned while looking at Anko. That won't be a problem for Naruto. I've personally trained him and I know for a fact that there aren't any genin capable of taking him down. No offense to the other Janin sensei, but Naruto can easily pass these exams by himself. Anko explained while staring Aruka down. Enough, the rookies will be allowed to participate in this year's Chunin selection exam. Give these applications to your teams and have them meet at the academy on the 17th if they want to compete. Now on to the older Genin teams. Seru Tobi stated as several Janin stood up and made their way to his desk. This is gonna be one hell of a Chunin selection exam. Let's hope daddy enjoys it, right baby? Anko mumbled to herself while rubbing her stomach softly. And that is the end of the part 3. I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe it helps me to continue making this fanfiction readings. Be sure to thank and support Kairomaru. See you in the next video quietly here. Love you all.